some of the the key issues are essentially prevention uh detection uh, and treatment as far as prevention is concerned um we are in a state of lockdown um the government has taken a lot of measures uh, to ensure that people stay in those practice social distancing uh there is there is a, a, a lot of focus on uh, sanitization of hot spots uh a lot of personal protective equipment for doctors and frontline healthcare workers has been ordered by the government uh a lot of steps have been taken to contain the spread uh, of this pandemic as far as detection is concerned uh, we are we're all aware that the who had actually advised that testing has to be done in large scale numbers uh, so that uh, an accurate handle on the number of infections uh, can be obtained uh, and that would he- help the healthcare infrastructure to prepare itself uh uh to 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 meet the demands of increased uh, number of patients uh initially we got off to a slow start on testing uh but eventually the government did open up testing to private labs uh the issue now with testing is the lack of testing kits uh, the government is working overtime to 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 ensure that testing kits are approved uh out of turn and in expedited and in expedited basis uh as far as treatment is concerned uh thus far all treatment is essentially symptomatic because there is no vaccine there is no no cure as such for this particular um, strain of 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 the virus uh the the r&d labs uh, private entities and both the, along with the government they are working double time to ensure that uh, there is a viable uh cure and treatment protocol that is established but uh, thus far treatment is essentially symptomatic and to cater to that the government has stepped up and has uh, taken steps to ensure that there are adequate treatment uh, the adequate treatment equipment which is available things like ventilators uh, uh, those are required uh, the government has taken steps to ensure procurement of ventilators as well so i think the government is 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 doing a lot in terms of trying to prevent the spread of the disease trying to contain the spread of the disease to the extent that it has um, spread in different in some uh, uh, small sections uh, and finally the government is taking steps to to ensure that there are adequate treatment measures in place the regulatory regime that actually governs the the approval of uh, uh drugs uh, uh, in india is essentially two part one is the drugs and cosmetics act um, along with the drugs and cosmetics rules that uh, deals with the the approval pathway the second aspect is is the actual clinical trial aspect of these approvals uh, that is dealt with the clinical trial rules uh, which were promulgated in 2019 so essentially every new drug or every new vaccine in this particular case or even a test kit uh, would actually have to go through the approval process which is prescribed under the drug and cosmetics act and the rules and as well as the clinical trial um, rules as well as far as test kits are concerned uh, there could also be applicability of the medical device rules because uh, diagnostic tests are uh, covered under uh, the medical device rules as far as things like hand sanitizers personal protective equipment uh n95 masks are concerned again these are also covered under the subject matter of of medical devices which is an extension of the term drugs uh under the drugs and cosmetics act uh similarly the drugs and cosmetics act along with the medical device rules would be applicable uh in terms of approvals of 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 these products the same would also be apl- applicable to to testing kits as well uh and also finally would also be applicable to vaccines uh, and a potential cure as 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 well now given the fact that we don't have much time uh, to to go through the entire regulatory process um, and go through the entire uh, uh, length of of extended clinical trials uh, there are expedited trial procedures that are prescribed in these legislations and uh, the government is invoking a lot of these expedited trial provisions uh by expedited trial provisions we mean that they have abbreviated data filing requirements uh they also look at approvals granted in other jurisdictions 
uh, and apply those approvals um, in, uh, in India as as benchmarks, and and will they will eventually approve these products in India as well. So I think the the, the and the government is actually in uh, invoking these provisions. Uh, there has been uh, notifications by the the regulators that there are seven to ten day approval windows that have been given for uh, test kits and um, uh, for that matter even uh, ventilators and personal protective equipment. As far as vaccines are concerned, uh, they will have to go through a slightly longer approval process given the fact that adverse events of these, these vaccines, uh, the reactions uh, of patients have to be tested um, and that may take a little more time. But as far as uh, preventive uh, diagnostic uh, measures are concerned, the government is uh, acting in an expeditious manner and is actually approving them uh, with a lot of abbreviated uh, approval data requirements as opposed to the normal case of things. Both the clinical trial rules as well as the medical device rules uh, have expedited approval requirements. Uh, they actually have those provisions in place uh, and these are there because they, the government felt the need that they need to cater to emergency provisions and today we are in a situation of, of a health emergency so to speak. As far as diagnostic tickets, masks, personal protective equipment and ventilators are concerned, uh, the provisions of the medical devices rules provide for a relaxation of, of data submission requirements. Uh, and these are specific in cases of life-threatening serious diseases or uh, in this case, uh, uh, epidemic situations. Uh, and the government has actually invoked these uh, expedited approval provisions. Uh, what happens is that in such cases, the clinical data requirements, um, which are as far, which are which are in normal course would require extensive data submissions, uh, the government has has chosen to accept uh, abbreviated data requirements. Uh, they don't require so much of detail in terms of of clinical stability data uh, or safety and efficacy data. Uh, they are, they are happy to accept that in a, a, a shorter, less uh, descriptive form. Uh, secondly, there is a time frame that has been prescribed uh, uh, under the medical device rules. The expedited timeline is 90 days as opposed to a couple of months. Uh, actually, some of the latest notifications by the regulator have reduced this 90 day period to, to as, as, as short as 7 to 10 days as well. So they have not only invoked expedited uh, uh, approvals uh, by way of uh, abbreviated data, but they've also reduced uh, the timeline. As far as a particular vaccine is concerned, now that's a slightly uh, uh, longer sort of approval uh, timeline issue for the simple reason that uh, till date there is no vaccine which has been safely tested. But that said, again, the uh, clinical trial rules do provide for for a situation like this uh, as an emergency epidemic situation and in this case uh, uh, an application for an expedited review can be made the government is calling people to make these applications uh, again that will have uh, 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 ex uh, abbreviated data requirements it may not have uh, the requirement of so much of, of local trial requirements uh, the, the regulator may be happy accepting trials from um, other countries but the again the review time is slightly longer and rightly so because safety efficacy of these vaccines has to be evaluated uh, but then again it is uh, the invocation of a shorter approval period so yeah, and yes the government is 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 looking at a shorter um, approval period essentially the thing is that expedited approvals are the need of PR and I think the government has stepped up to that challenge and inv invoked all the expedited approval provisions uh, under the Drugs and Cosmetics Act, under the clinical trials rules, and as well as the medical device rules. In relation to supply, uh, we have laws like the Essential Commodities Act uh, that lay down the rules uh, in relation to the supplies of, of commodities that are essential for living, uh, so to speak. Now what happens is, when an item is declared as an essential commodity, it is incumbent on the government uh, to ensure that supplies of these commodities are unabated. 
Now, what happens is the pressure then falls on the manufacturing and the supply chain to ensure that there is no dearth of these these commodities. Uh, now, masks and personal pre- protective equipment have already been identified as essential commodities. Uh, and ventilators will eventually also uh, be identified as essential commodities. I don't rule out that possibility. Uh, the thing is that violation of the Essential Commodities Act entails both civil and criminal liability. So, so people following those, uh, following the, the provisions of the act, uh, uh, the likelihood is much stronger. As regards pricing, uh, we had instances where prices of masks, hand sanitizers, uh, and even personal protective equipment, uh, equipment um, uh, really shot up uh, in the, the initial days of the lockdown. Now, to prevent a situation like this, uh, we have what is called as the drugs price control order, which is again uh, an order which has been passed under the aegis of the Essential Commodities Act. What the drugs price control order does is, is it empowers the pricing regulator, which in this case is the National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority, to set price caps of, of uh, uh, essential and life-saving drugs uh, uh, in the course of its action. Uh, it also ensures that the manufacturers do not sell these identified products at prices beyond the price caps that have set, or else there are penalties for, for violation. So, so for example, I'll give you an example. Prices of masks, which went up radically, have now been fixed. Uh, prices of hand sanitizers, uh, which went up, have now been fixed. Uh, manufacturers cannot charge more than the ceiling prices. Uh, the government has also fixed prices of, of testing kits um, uh, uh, as uh, there were concerns that these may not be affordable. Uh, now, that has its its own share of of issues uh, which are currently being ironed out. So the biggest problem that uh, the the pharma manufacturing industry is facing at this point in time is uh, a lack of manpower. Uh, Now because of the lockdown, uh, factory workers are are not able to reach their factory premises. Uh, Secondly, there's a lot of inventory which is stuck uh, in transit. Uh, because of, of the lockdown that is preventing uh, uh, the movement of goods across borders uh, in the country, uh, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, raw material and finished goods are stuck on the highways, uh, and that is having its effect on downstream manufacturing and, and further downstream uh, downstream supply. Uh, I think what the government really needs to look at is how to enable a seamless uh, 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 transport of of raw materials and finished goods um, across borders so that uh, life-saving drugs, uh, personal protective equipment, masks, sanitizers are easily available uh, when they're required. I think another glaring concern is is the lack of availability of raw materials to uh, uh, manufacture uh, these life-saving drugs. Uh, there is a lot of dependency on on foreign imports for APIs for raw materials uh, uh, and from China uh, especially. So I think uh, there needs to be a reduction in dependency, uh, an increase in in local capabilities to manufacture raw materials, uh, so that we become self sufficient uh, in catering to the needs of our uh, local industry, and uh, rely a lot less on foreign imports. Uh, which, as you know, at this point in time, are uh, 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 stalled uh, because there are no flights between countries. We are short on good healthcare facilities. The government needs to ramp up establishment of isolation wards and treatment centers to augment the current short supply of beds. Uh, there are news reports of the government taking over state-run hospitals and converting them into specialist COVID facilities. Uh, There's also news reports of state governments taking over government schools and converting them into temporary temporary quarantine uh, facilities. I think the government is thinking out of the box uh, and they are focused on providing additional healthcare facilities to augment 
the current short supply uh i think one more thing the government could consider is is identifying expedited approval processes for new healthcare facilities uh like the way they are using expedited approvals for clinical equipment for test kits uh, uh ventilators etc uh provided a certain establishment meets the compliance norms uh the government may consider an expedited approval so that eventually if the time comes uh that the, there is an explosion in the number of cases requiring urgent medical care uh the government is prepared with the necessary infrastructure so i think the government needs to move a little more in this regard uh, they are doing a great job at it currently i think a little more uh, proactiveness uh, some expedited approvals if they can give uh, that will really help in tidying over uh, the current short supply of healthcare institutions and facilities uh, catering to the treatment of patients for covid-19 for the government i would say help the industry expedite approvals uh, be open to suggestions and new ideas the industry is here to support you and serve the nation uh, you know the government needs to be proactive rather than reactive uh, we have lessons that we can learn from countries like china italy uh, and the us uh, i think we can identify the mistakes that have been made uh in terms of identification and treatment uh, uh qua these countries uh we are in a situation where we can avoid making these mistakes it is absolutely important that we avoid making these mistakes given the fact that our population is is far far more than at least uh, italy is concerned as far as the interest is concerned i think uh we need to stand with the government uh, at this point in time uh the industry needs to put aside its differences ramp up uh production um, i think augment our existing uh, raw material and api supply uh, we the industry needs to fill in the void that has been left uh, uh, by china uh, i think we have the industry has an opportunity of becoming uh, the world's biggest producer of raw materials uh, we can actually take over the position which is currently dominated uh, by china uh, you know we are already the pharmacy of the world uh, i think the it's a, it's a perfect chance to take this a step further and uh, become the world's uh, go to supplier for all pharmaceutical products as far as people is con- are concerned i think the biggest thing is that people need to listen to advisories that are being issued by the government uh, most importantly practice good hygiene practice social distancing uh, it's very important don't believe in rumors there's a lot of um, incorrect information that is being being disseminated through social media uh, it could, it's better that people don't believe uh, these kind of rumors uh, you know i i think i read it somewhere that uh, i think success depends on how well we stay away from each other at this point in time uh, you know it's either 6 feet apart or 6 uh, 6 feet under uh the choice is is with the people so to speak but i think in the end uh, we will all overcome this together this will change uh, the way uh, uh, we see each other we talk to each other we interact with each other but i think in the end this will also pass um uh, i think a lot of lessons can be learned uh, uh we can all stand together and uh, eventually this is something which will eventually sort of you know see its end uh, in the time to come